A home which has brought happiness to the hearts of so many people despite them not yet having entered it. A home which cannot be compared to any other home that we know of today. A home that causes every word of every language and every dialect to pause in a state of paralysis, unable to illustrate the magnificence of this particular home. This is a home that has made some people smile in the most grueling and grievous of circumstances. Just merely thinking about this home is enough to raise the burden from the burdened. And it is enough to replace the sorrow within the hearts of the sorrowed into happiness and tightness into a sense of expanse. Is enough to free any human being from the shackles of burden and stress and depression and internal poverty until they reach the precipice of Jannah. Majestic gates, but the gates are closed. And the Rasul will move forward to ask for the gates to be open. So the Khazan says, who are you? So he says, Muhammad, Rasulullah. Ah, what an honor that you're of his nation. The angel says, I was ordered for you that I would not open this gate to any before you there will be no sweat no bad smells nobody has to take a bath nobody gets older nobody gets tired there's no bad words nobody has to work there's no labor nobody has to pay for anything paradise means Everything in life that you ever imagined, that you ever wanted, you will have it there, but on the highest level. Everybody will live forever, and the words will be peace. And if you my homeboy, and we all in paradise together, I'll come over to your palace, and we party over there. Because what else could paradise be but the best of whatever it is people want in this life that they can never have. That's what paradise is. When the day comes and the hisab is finished and the tests and trials and tribulations are done, the righteous will be moved in their hordes towards Jannah and those who are Allah conscious those who lived aware of Allah Rabbul Izzah will be moved in their hordes towards Jannah, in their groups towards Jannah. And when you look at them, you will see on their faces happiness, faces that they radiant, glowing with happiness, happy of the glad tiding that is to come. Alhamdulillah, I am at the doors of Jannah. In the Sahih, it is narrated on the authority of Utbah ibn Ghazwan that he says, I swear by Allah, Wallahi, that the distance between the two gate posts of the gates of Jannah is the distance of 40 years travel. He says, nevertheless, a day will come when those gates will be busy flooding with people. Imagine their faces as they walk towards the prize. He said the first batch of people to enter the gates of paradise, their faces will look like the moon when it is full. Luminosity, light. And he says the next batch of people to enter Jannah, their faces will look like the brightest planet that you can see today in the skies of this dunya. Nadira, luminous, pleased, satisfied. These are their faces. They are now walking towards the gates of Jannah that have just opened up.
Who is knocking? He says, I am Muhammad, the son of Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The angel then says, I have been commanded by Allah to knock open the gates of paradise for anybody before you. And the gates, they begin to open. The people of paradise will be driven towards Jannah in flocks, in groups, in multitudes towards the gates of Jannah. Then the gates of Jannah will open and the gatekeepers of paradise will say to those going through, Peace be upon you, congratulations, you have done well, so enter, come inside, come inside. And you will see inside it what no eye has ever seen, what no ear has ever heard, nor has it ever occurred on the imagination of man. If you ask about its soil and its sand, it is the sensation of mist and saffron. And if you ask about its ceiling, it is the throne of the beneficent. If you were to ask about its cement, it is purified mist. If you were to ask of its stones and pebbles, it is jewels, emeralds and rubies. Can you imagine? Jannah is filled with it. What do you think now, brothers and sisters, is the worry of the people of paradise? What do you think their worry is? The anxiety is, will I have to leave? Is this a dream? Will I become ill? Will I have to die again? Will I miss out? Suddenly an announcement is made. The announcement says, O oh people of paradise, you're going to be given life, you're never going to experience death ever again. And you're going to be given good health, you will never experience illness again. You're going to be given youth, you will never experience old age again. And you're going to be given pleasure and delights, you will never be miserable again. The Messenger وسلم, says, in paradise, there are certain pavilions which Allah has prepared for the believers that are made out of a single hollowed out pearl that extends 60 miles into the sky. What then about the estates of paradise? What then about the kingdoms of paradise? If you ask about the wine of paradise and the milk of paradise and the water of paradise and the honey of paradise, the answer to this question, my brothers and sisters, is one word. Bottles? No, no. Jars? No. Crates? No. The answer is anhar, anhar, rivers, rivers. This, these are the quantities you will be experiencing in paradise. In paradise, there are rivers of water, the taste of which never pollutes. And there are, there are rivers of milk, which never goes off. And rivers of wine, that is sweet and delicious for those who drink. There are no bad effects in it, and it won't intoxicate people. It is white. They will be given to drink from a sealed wine, the end sip of which will be misk. And rivers of clarified honey. Rivers of Jannah, he says, they flow above the surface of the earth, in and around the pavilions of Jannah. If you ask about the trees of paradise, this is yet another bewildering topic. He alayhi salatu wasalam would say there is no tree in paradise except that its trunk is made out of solid gold. These trees are strange because not only do they provide fruit in the winter and summer alike, but these are also trees that produce the garments of the people of Jannah. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he says, if anybody in the people of paradise craves a fruit that he sees above him, that branch will automatically lower itself till it gets to your bedside so that you pick and you eat as you wish. If you ask about the menu of Jannah, there is every type of fruit that you may want to choose from and every type of meat that you may wish to eat from. Ya Allah, an announcement saying eat and drink as you wish because of the good that you used to do. If you ask about the women of paradise, then allow me, my brothers and sisters, to try to describe, just for a moment at least, that initial moment when you meet this individual. When the smile of this woman is enough to illuminate all of the gardens of Jannah. Can you imagine the roller coaster of emotion when you see this individual approaching you in Jannah? My brothers, she will come and she will sing to you. We are the honorable women who have been created for honorable men and we look with the eye of contentment. 
What else will these women, they say, they will say, we are the eternal ones, and we are the safe ones, and we are the beautiful ones. What words can we describe her other than the words of Allah Almighty who said, Hurun Ain. And I take this opportunity as well. The first point, my dear respected honorable sister in Islam, is that in paradise there will be no ill feelings. There will be no spite, there will be no ransom, there will be no jealousy, there will be no anger or hatred, there will be no gossip, there will be no backbiting. All of these ill characteristics will be dropped at the gates of Jannah before you even go in. Imam al-Qurtubi narrates in his tafsir that our mother Aisha is narrated to have said that the women of paradise, i.e. the women who work their way up, they will say to the Hur al Ain in paradise, we are women who prayed, you never prayed. And we are women who fasted for the sake of Allah, and you never fasted. We are women who gave out in charity for the sake of Allah, you never gave out charity. And we performed wudu, ablution before prayer, you never performed wudu. Our mother Aisha says, therefore our argument will be stronger than theirs. Then a day will come, you're in Jannah, enjoying its, its, its wonders, and the caller will call, O oh, inhabitants of Jannah, your Lord wishes an audience with you, so rush to the meeting of your Lord. So they come, mounts are prepared for them, royals, royces of the Akhirah. They will get on top of it and ride to the meeting of their Lord. And then they reach a vast opening valley. The, the throne and the kursi of Allah Rabbul Izzah is placed there. And then their stations are placed. Some will sit on stations, on stages of light. Others on pearls, others on jewelry, others on gold and silver. The lowest level of, on that day are those sitting on cushions of misk. The caller calls, Ya Ahl al Jannah, O people of Jannah, there's a promise of Allah left with you. He wishes to honor the promise. So they look at each other and they say, What promise is this? Didn't he? make our faces glow bright didn't he make us traverse over jahannam and enter us into jannah didn't he make our right deeds supersede our our wrong deeds as they are in this discussion a light comes from above them the whole of jannah is covered by it they raise their heads and the lord allah jalla subhana is in presence above them so they look up subhan al khaliq can you imagine the honor allah rabbul izza says Ya Ahlul Jannah, Salamun Alaikum. So they say, Allahumma anta salam, wa minka salam, tabarakta ya dhul jalali wal ikram. Oh Allah, your peace, from you comes peace. Blessed art thou, how high and exalted are you. So Allah Rabbul Izza says, and look at the honor. Where are my servants who used to worship and obey me, having never seen me? They never saw me. Someone told them believe. They said we believe in our Lord. Where are those who believed and obeyed, having never seen me? So they say, O oh Lord, we are pleased. Be pleased with us. So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, If I wasn't pleased with you, I wouldn't have put you in my Jannah. So ask for something else. Today is the day of excess. So all of Jannah join on this and they say, Oh Rabb, show your face. We want to look at you. So Allah Rabbul Izzah orders for the hijab to be removed. A light will emanate from above them, which will flood the scenery of paradise. They will look above to see what it is. And it is Allah, the most majestic, the exalted. He has removed the veils between him and his servants. And now they see Allah, the creator of beauty, with their very own eyes. They continue to stare. They continue to glare, forgetting about all of the goodness Allah has given them in paradise. Till Allah Almighty returns the veil once again. La ilaha illallah.